Okay, so these are the baits that I'm using. Um, mostly the 2 inch ultralight rip and wrap and also the slab wrap which is a little bit heavier. I'll leave the link um, in the description below. This is the hardware. Um, the number 4 hooks work really well. And these are the little clips that I use to balance out the plug. And there it is. That's the um, figure 8 clips. And I also use them for larger plugs as well. And all of this I'll link in the comments. Um, basically, I work these baits like a jig. And they're surprisingly weedless um, with only the one single hook in the back. They're designed to fall uh, horizontally, if anything, a little bit head first. Now that coupled with the light weight of the baits, um, the rip and wrap weighs three sixteenth of an ounce, and the slab wrap quarter ounce. You know, I haven't lost one yet, and I'm fishing very sticky structure. Now these larger porgies, they will hit a diamond jig, epoxy jig. The main advantage for me using um, these ultralight crankbaits, vibration baits uh, over jigs is line twist. Um, these baits are designed to swim um, horizontally both on the retrieve and the fall. And if you're bouncing a jig all day, you're going to get a lot more line twist. And that drives me crazy because I have very severe... OCD when it comes to fishing. Um, also, they just don't snag as much. You know, here you see, you know, Porgy, this one's like 14, 14 and a half inches, no problem eating that bait. I've caught some small ones too, but for the most part, you're weeding out the largest uh, Porgies in a school. And you know, this, this isn't deep water jigging, I mean, maybe like 10 to 12 feet for the most part. Uh, once I get over 15 feet, I switch to the slab wrap or if there's some current. And as usual, if there is current, you're pitching your bait up current and then working it back down. So that's the way to get these, you know, small jigs down deep. And I've tried... Um, getting these porgies to hit a moving bait, like a really slow retrieve off the bottom, they they just will not hit a moving bait. They want it jigged. They will tag and slash at it on the fall. So, you know, it's, it's, it's exactly the same as jigging with a jig head and gulp. Um, you know, it's a lot of line watching and having very sharp hooks. Uh, these these hooks come very sharp out of the pack and you know the sharper your hook the more time you have to set the hook because when they do slash at it um, if any part of that hook point gets caught in the lip and the skin uh, that just buys you a little bit of time to set the hook these fish they definitely won't eat the crankbait um, even less so than gulp or soft plastics. So, you know, if, if you don't set the hook in a timely fashion, you're just not going to catch these fish. Um, it's, it's just a very clean kind of fishing. You know, if I can reduce all my fishing, fluking, striped bass, whatever, down to hard body baits, I would. And believe me, I've tried with fluke. It's probably not the best season to experiment with fluke, but I've wasted a few trips uh, using nothing but blade baits and vibration baits uh, with not much to show for it but maybe next year now this rod um, is my Zodius light action spinner it's about a power to a power and a half too heavy not for the size of the fish or even the line. Um, I'm using six or eight pound floral leader, but really for the size of the hook. Uh, this number four owner single hook is very small. And a lot of these fish are barely lip hooked. They're, 
they're just skin hooked and you know using this rod I have to rely on the drag and that also creates a lot of line twist um, and I couldn't put as much pressure on the fish as I normally do so later on you'll see me switch rods to a really light kind of noodle trout rod and that works out much better I can fish on a tighter drag and ironically put more pressure on the fish um, and I've never had a hook pull out using the trout rod Yeah, right there you see how lightly that fish is hooked. Um, a lot of them come up that way. A lot of them are hooked on the outside of the mouth. And like I said, you know, they, they hit it, but they don't eat it. So you got to be on your toes. And then during the fight, you just have to set your drag pressure really light. There you go. Um, here's a little montage of the fish that I've missed or failed to land and I really blame the action of the rod and here's a pretty decent one that I lost And as you would expect, using any kind of artificial bait, you'll catch different species. Um, for a porgy, this is a pretty big bait. And I really think that the larger porgy, you know, over 14, 15 inches, occasionally they will chase down bait fish. Um, but relatively speaking, this is a very tiny bait. So... It's pretty cute. I, I've, I've caught a number of these uh, small schoolies and, you know, snappers, obviously, and also a few baby fluke. This is the first time I'm using light rod and I'll leave um, links to where you can buy this stuff down down below this um, actually is a Chinese rod you know it's like 40 bucks but it has a pretty nice carbon blank and SIC guides so if you're willing to wait a couple weeks for delivery it's a pretty good deal Okay, so now I switch completely over to this rod. Um, the reel is a 500 size Shimano Symmetry, and I'm using six pound braid and six pound leader uh, connected with FG knot and a little owner snap to the uh, crankbait. Yeah, just the nature of this rod, um, I'm fishing at almost double the drag pressure uh, as on my Zodius, and you know, the rod is so soft that it's going to cushion all those head shakes and really keep them pinned no matter how they're hooked. You no, know, it's interesting. With the same gear, there is no way I'm landing a similar size blackfish. These porgies, they're just, they don't fight very smart. They kind of just spaz out. 
and they don't really dig into the rocks they don't break you off so you can use really light line um, the reason I use six or eight pound leader is just to get the bait down deeper but yeah even a small blackfish it, you know this is not the gear for that Snag him. And this fish fought a little weird and you know, it turned out to be pretty gruesome. Got it right in the eyeball. That sucks. I thought about keeping it, but I really wasn't keeping fish at this point. Uh, and okay. I, I think he'll be fine. I hope. So here I'm using the slab wrap. Um, there's actually quite a bit of current sweeping around this point. And, you know, it's a difference of, I think, two grams. But the shape and, you know, we're using this light tackle. Um, two grams is quite a big difference. And you can really get it down deeper. Another good rod that I see a lot in stores is um, St. Croix's Premier or Triumph trout rods. Uh, they're very slow action and I think they're relatively cheap. Alright, here I'm just checking the hook point and I do this after every other fish. Um, I keep a small, really fine hook file in my vest pocket. And I'm constantly touching up the point throughout the day. Now, here I'm fishing pretty deep. This is uh, about 20 to 21 feet. And, you know, the slab wrap will get down, but it just takes a while. And there's also the current coming in from around the point. This is incoming tide. But yeah, these, these baits give you a lot of feedback. Um, when you pull them, you'll feel the vibration through your rod. And if it picks up any kind of wheeze or if it fouled on the back hook, you know, if the hook wraps around your line, you know it immediately. And I really think that the porgies target the tail of your bait, much like a snapper or bluefish do. And here, I don't know what happened to this fish, um, but this is the same drag setting. And I didn't think I could stop this fish. And I thought I had, you know, like a schooly striped bass or something like that. see it. 
So yeah, this um, it, it turned out to be a porgy. Um, it was like 16 and a half inches, which was a nice porgy, but I've caught larger and none of them fought like this. I can only imagine that, you know, this guy lives right on the point. He's used to heavy current. I don't know. You know, he's like a Olympic class porgy. And as usual, I net all my fish now. Um, they're just easier to handle. I'm trying to keep it on that car mat so it doesn't poke any more holes in my boat. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really fun way to fish, and with fluking being the way it was this year, you know, I I, I spent a lot of time porgy fishing. This guy would be okay. Alright, I hope you enjoy and guaranteed last Porgy video of the year. Alright, if you like what you see, please subscribe.